Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we tonight? Are we all right? Yeah. Good, 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 good. And it's Halloween. Best time of the year for me. I love Halloween. It's incredible. I usually spend the whole period with my wife, but she's not here tonight because she just got a broomstick fixed. So she's hanging out with her friends up there somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, so Halloween is all good. I, you all getting the spirit of things? You enjoying it? You watching the scary movies out there? Yeah? There's a lot to choose from. We've obviously got uh, Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street with his razor glove fingers. We've got Jason from Friday the 13th with his machete. We've got um, Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs and his cannibalism. We have Amber Heard from the Johnny Depp trial and her poo. And probably the scariest woman out there at the moment, Will Smith's wife. <laughs> with her skinhead. Now listen, I'm not making fun of alopecia, right? Alopecia is a terrible, terrible disease. I want to make it clear, I'm not making fun of that. It's a thing that affects people, they lose their hair, it's awful. And I think we can all agree it's awful after what we've seen alopecia do to Chris Rock. But yeah, it is terrifying. This is, in fact, my second stand-up comedy ever, right? It is terrifying. L last week, my wife, my wife filmed my first one, and it went really well. People were laughing, it was great. And we watched it back, but there was a lot of swearing, because I think I was nervous. And my daughter, I've got a beautiful eight-year-old little girl, and she goes to me, she's like, Daddy, why are you swearing so much in comedy? And I was like, oh, okay. Basically, sometimes in adult comedy, it's funny to drop the F-bomb or the S-bomb word or this and the other. She goes, really? It's funny. I was like, yeah. She goes, okay. About a minute later, she says to me, Daddy, I've got a joke for you. I was like, uh-oh. I was like, baby, and she's like, she's so gorgeous. And has it got a swear word in it? She goes, I was like, baby, you can't, you're eight. I'm not, you can't, like, I'm sorry. But the comedian in me needed to know the joke. So I go, all right, I'm gonna give you a pass. This one time you can swear. Tell me your joke. She goes, knock, knock. I said, who's there? She goes, fuck you. <laughs> I was so proud and disheartened at the same time. I gave her a bowl of ice cream for a really good joke, but she had to eat it with a chopstick as punishment. But yeah, no, it is Halloween. It is Halloween. I love being scared. I love the whole period. It's awesome. I remember the first time I was terrified, like fucking frightened to my soul. And it was Christmas 1988. And my whole family had got together to stay in this big house. And it was, like, it was great. But late at night, I was sleeping. I was nine years old. I was sleeping. And my uncle, my uncle came into my room and I was terrified, I was scared that my mum would find out because I really fancied my uncle. <laughs> but no, it was fine, it, it was basically the wrong room. It was, it was all a mistake, he'd had one too many, he'd come into the wrong place, he was actually looking for my baby sister's room down the way. <laughs> I, know, I know, I'm sorry. No, 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 it worked out, they're still together. <laughs> they're fine, they had a kid. They grew up, and listen, I don't care what you say about children of incest. This kid grew up, you can kind of almost 100% sort of, in a weird way, kind of understand what he's saying. Right? <laughs> Physically, he had the same amount of teeth as he had legs. <laughs> Three. But yeah, no, look, Halloween's great. Sorry, Halloween is great. I would never, I would never, I would, just FYI, I would never ever condone incest unless your mum is smoking hot. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is, um, Halloween's great, I love Halloween. It's, um, I love trick or treat. I love it when you trick or treat, it's brilliant. Better when you have a kid, because the idea, I think, of trying to entice children to your house with candy is a bit weird. <laughs> and people get really judgmental, especially if you're doing it in February. <laughs> Out the back of a van. 
but no, I do. <laughs> Sorry, I do have an eight-year-old girl, so I love dressing her up. I love taking her out. I love it when they come to my house as well, and it's great. And it's like the door goes, ding dong. You open it up. You're like, oh, hello. And what are you supposed to be? Oh, you're a very scary witch. And what about you? Spider-Man? Oh, that's my favourite superhero. And you go off and you go get the candy. Because they're young. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know that they're young. So you get the cheapest possible candy you can possibly get. So you go, here you go. Have a sweetie. There you go. They're, they're very brave. Very, you look brave. You look really shut up. But here's the thing. No one told me that there isn't a cutoff point to the age that people go trick or treating. So then the other times come where the doorbell goes ding dong and you open the door and you're met with two six foot tall wearing masks. One's got a cigarette hanging out, the other one's got a smoker's cough. <coughs> so what are you supposed to be? 35 and 40? Trick or treat and actually I'm 14. 14. Are those fucking car keys? <laughs> but still, you don't want to be rude, so you go get the candy and you think, and you hand it there, you're like, here you go. But they know it's cheap because they're older, so they look at it and then they look at me like I'm being judged. <laughs> I don't know why I just put the imaginary candy back down over here. <laughs> on the I don't want to be carrying it around all night, so I'll put it here on my imaginary table in my imaginary house. Anyway, but yeah, it's great. But changing gears a little bit, some countries don't really get to celebrate Halloween because they're poverty stricken, right? So it's more of a nightmare than Halloween for them, it's terrible. And I was always raised with the term and the idea, I'm sure we can all relate, which is don't waste food, there are starving people out in the world, right? It's, it's a sad thing, we all grew up with it. And my parents were really strict, like don't waste food, starving children. And I used that to make this little boy happy once, and I'll tell you the story. So, I'm in London, and it was lunchtime. So I went to Subway, and I got myself a 12-inch meatball sub. That's not 12 inches, is it? Hold on, hold on a minute. 12 inches, right? So I sat down on a park bench in London, and there was a bin next to it a while, and I ate the first six inches of this Subway sandwich, right? It was delicious. But sadly, my eyes were just bigger than my belly. They were just, it was too much. So I didn't want to carry it around. So I wrapped it up and I was about to throw it in the bin when I see in the corner of my eye, this little boy. And he was clearly poor, dirty clothes, ripped. It was a whole nightmare. And I felt terrible. So I called him over and I put the sandwich back on my lap and I opened it up and I said, I was about to throw this in the bin. And he looked so happy. And even though I didn't want it, I finished every last bite of that sandwich. He was so happy, he cried. Anyway, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a funny thing, um, Halloween. I do really enjoy it. But another thing that I've also found out recently is changing gears completely to wheelchairs, as one does, is that political correctness has gone in a very strange direction. One being that the term disabled is no longer allowed. I don't know if you know this, but if you say someone's disabled, you're not allowed to say that. You have to say people of determination. Right? Do you know this? But what about the ones that aren't determined? How did they get, how did they get through with this information? Like, how are they testing this, right? Are they taking people in wheelchairs, bringing them to a bunch of steps, and saying, listen, there's a thousand deer up there. Go! Oh, he's very determined. Some of them must have given up, right? Some of them surely must have given up. Are they, are they people of disinterest? Like, what, what are we calling those? How, how is this all working out? Oh, they all, they all gather around in a circle. You know how it is, and they, you got that really determined guy who goes, hey guys, let's do a 500 mile uphill marathon in our wheelchairs. And the one guy's like, oh, no. Why not? Because I'm fucking disabled. <laughs> anyway, I thought, um, I'm not going to be up here for much longer, but I did want to say, in addition to my daughter making that joke earlier, she, uh, she wrote me another joke, which I'm really proud of. And it does need context. 
she really did write it as well, I swear to God. And she goes, um, to give you context, so I woke up one morning and I was lying in bed and my daughter jumps in and we're just like wrestling and playing and stuff thing. My wife is in the sitting room and she says, babe, do you want a cup of coffee? I said, yeah. So 10 minutes later, coffee hasn't arrived. I'm like, babe, where's that coffee? She goes, it's in the sitting room. So you might as well put it on the fucking moon, right? I'm in there and my daughter laughs. She goes, babe, I've got, a, uh, sorry, Daddy, I've got a great joke. And she went off and she wrote it and she comes back and it goes like this. So I asked, make me coffee now, because apparently I'm a totalitarian dictator. <laughs> I was lying on the bed and 10 minutes later, I'm like, where's my coffee? My wife replied, in the washing machine. So I said, fuck you. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, look, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you ever so much for tonight. I really appreciate it. It is my second set, so thank you very much. Good night. Typical British behaviour, just put the mic back.